Okay, so I'm here at Sim Racing Expo and we've got a full Porsche, <laughs> literally a full-size car, and they've built a uh, sim rig into the into the car here. We've got direct drive wheels, we've got the, the pedals. Uh, you also notice that they've lined up the uh, the car with uh, with the screen, so that you're basically looking through the windscreen, so it feels like you're actually looking out to reality. Uh, look at these wing mirrors, which actually have LCD screens in the wing mirror, to you know for the full-on authentic experience. There, I mean. You could, you could obviously just buy a VR headset and then you wouldn't need a car. But if you've got a spare Porsche, as many of us do, uh, why not? Why not just put it in your sitting room and why not put, put a sim rig in it? It's the obvious thing to do. So uh, we're going to jump in. It's, oh, it's also got a motion rig. It looks like I could just see there. It looks like they've got a D box on the individual chairs and it's got a passenger seat. So uh, you can get your friends in it maximum convenience and functionality but uh, yeah we, we're gonna jump in and give it a, a test drive um, I, I'm, I have to say I am quite excited to, to give this uh, a little bash and uh, hopefully hopefully I don't break it because if I do it's a little bit outside of my budget to fix it so uh, let's let's get in the car and give it a go a lot of driving simulators in VR this was a really bizarre experience we're obviously sat inside a real Porsche Cup car and so you get the feeling of being enveloped by the vehicle very similar to how you feel like when you're wearing a VR headset and sat in a car but obviously in this case everything's just more tangible that there is a real dash there there's a real Motec display there everything around you is real um, it definitely felt better than what you experienced with a VR headset I wonder if when VR headsets have wider field of views though, if it will be even more analogous to this setup. Now unfortunately the screens in front of the simulator were 2D screens, but because they were positioned further away and because they did a really good job of making sure the field of view of the screens was spot on to actually merge with the, uh, the actual car that we're sat in, it was really, really seamless and just super, super immersive. Weirdly, what stood out is when I first got in, we left the door open to, to film some different angles, and it just felt really off being inside a car, traveling down the uh, Nürburgring GP circuit with the door open. I was like, oh, you need to shut the door. Go <laughs> shut the door here. Another aspect of the simulator that really stood out was the motion, or general lack of it, in a good way. And that was that they'd dialed the motion down on the D-Box uh, motion platform underneath the seat so that it was really, really responsive and only giving useful information. Sure, when you got the brake, you moved forwards a bit, you did feel a bit of acceleration, you did feel a little bit left to right, but it was mostly the sort of suspension travel, the wheels going over curbing, and to give a sense of what the car was doing rather than to give that kind of roller coaster experience. And exactly the same thing can be said for the steering. It used a direct drive wheel, but again, it was just set up for information, uh, not, too, not too strong, a little bit of dampening spot on the end result with the screens the motion the steering r factor 2 set up perfect was we could just jump in and drive and it felt totally natural none of that what's going on what do i need to do it was just immediately intuitive the moment that we sat in it so what i'm saying is this is really the uh, sim racer end game porsche cup car in your sitting room three giant screens you're good that's it no more upgrades needed joking aside though the the reality is you can build something that gives you this exact, pretty much this exact experience at home just by using a VR headset, having a DD wheel and a basic simulator. The, the other parts of this is really just icing on the cake and the, the real crucial component is more just having the DD wheel set up correctly and the simulator set up correctly rather than the, all, all the other like gubbins around you. Uh, and it becomes really apparent having used a lot of motion rigs over the years that the more equipment there is 
the more opportunity there is for exhibitors and motion rig manufacturers or presenters of motion rigs to set things up a little bit wrong or in, in, in my opinion what's the wrong direction so as long as you've got the sim and you set it up correctly you can get the exact same enjoyment uh, as you would doing doing this but you can get it at home of course if Porsche do want to send me a, a Porsche cup car I, I won't turn it down let's, let's be honest if you want to try this rig out for yourself you can give it a bash at the Porsche racing experience I'll put a link to that in the description and well worth trying if you do get a chance because for me this was probably the best sim rig sim racing experience at sim racing expo 2019 We've got more videos from the expo coming up on the channel. So if you enjoyed this, don't forget to click the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the like button. And I'll probably catch you when we next live stream. Thanks for watching this, guys. Till the next one. Goodbye.